Hello everyone, this is Mr. 13 Things, or Silence Did Good, depending on which channel I'm posting this to. And I am here, going to finally go through and show you a little bit of a cheat, uh, but you know, that's mostly to show you how great Cam Studio and uh, Smooth Draw can be for uh, if you've got pretty complex calculations. Uh, um, in terms of having a little bit of a background, uh, you, this is a little bit inspired by those who use that pen and post uh, with LightScribe, that you can kind of either show the ink as it comes in, the ink, uh, and then you fill over the top of it, or um, I think the full ink each time. So what I've done is I'm going to go through here, and this is a calculation. We're going to go through and do for one last time, hopefully the last time ever, because we're going to head off into the program after this, a hand calculation of a quaternion rotation applied to a point. So a quaternion rotation applied to a point. This of course applies applied to a point. That implies of course P-O-I-N-T. Obviously it's a 3D point, right? And it uses something called the sandwich product. Sandwich product and you're gonna see like I gotta put the sandwich product right up there with the squeeze theorem with in terms of cool names so what we end up doing just to give you the broad overview is we actually map or we kind of take a 3d point which is defined as something let's say if you're thinking of this it has some value a in the X a I'm sorry edit undo Edit undo. You might see it this way, A and then B and then C. There are X, Y, and Z coordinates, X, Y, and Z coordinates, right? And we map it over to a quaternion, which is zero in the real, A in the I direction or the I imaginary vector, B in the J imaginary vector, and C in the K uh, I, J, K, imaginary vector, and I say vector, and that's not necessarily completely correct. What you're looking at is something called Hamiltonian numbers. And in Hamiltonian numbers, just like when you learned, hopefully, or will learn, the idea of originally the square root of minus 1 equals I, in Hamiltonian, we also know that it also, uh, we know that this is probably better written that I squared equals minus one, right? That's a better way to write it. But in Hamiltonian numbers, there are three different roots. And so you have this, these statements of fact, and just think, put these kind of way off on the side in your head that you know that I squared equals minus one, J squared equals minus one, K squared equals minus 1 and then i j k equals minus 1. These are Hamiltonian numbers. They're called Hamiltonian numbers and so what a Hamiltonian number has is basically a real component and then a I component and then a J component and then a K component. So that's the the mathematics that makes something called quaternions work and um, it involves something called a sandwich product, and you'll see what that is in a little bit. Basically, you're going to take and first have a rotation quaternion, multiply it by a point quaternion, take the basically the answer to that question, right? Throw it over here into that, and then multiply here by the conjugate. So we're going to put some labels up here. We're going to start with the rotation quaternion. That'll be up here. This is the point quaternion.
And sometimes you'll see that that's not going to be zero, but generally, um, if you're trying to convey more information just than the, the location of a 3D point, but as a rule, that will have zero in the real. The X value will be then mapped to this I component, the Y value to the J component, and the Z value to the K component. You're going to take the the solution of that, stick it back into here, and then over here you're going to have the conjugate of, I'll write that there, conjugate of, of the rotation quaternion. So that's why it's called the sandwich product, because you have the rotation quaternion here, and then you have the conjugate over here, and there you have it. All right, so now it's pretty straightforward how you come about mapping back and forth. And mapping, if you think about it mathematically or even conceptually, is when you can kind of have a one-to-one -one correspondence between something like on a sheet of paper to the 3D world or the 2D world or between two ideas. So when we talk about mapping be, uh, between this uh, in this imaginary 3D world from the real 3D world, it shouldn't really throw you because we, you hopefully have learned that standard engineering notation you basically have something called I hat. And so the map, we're going to kind of show the map here. You have it go to I hat, J hat, and K hat, which are the unit vectors in the X, Y, and Z direction. So don't let that throw you too much. What may throw you, however, and we're going to sketch that right now, is we're going to go ahead and do a calculation right now showing a rotation of this point, which we have is 1, 0, 0. And I'll put that point like right here, if you would. That's the point. 1 in the x, 0 in the y, and 0 in the z. And we're going to rotate it. I'm just going to go ahead and draft this in 3D here about this line, which that angle here is going to be 60 degrees. And you're going to see why in a little bit. We're actually trying to work with numbers that we know uh, the trigonometry to. And you're going to see why when we start looking at the trig. So, and I'll go ahead and one more time just draft that also in a kind of in a projection looking down. So I'm going to go ahead and draft this x-axis this way. And I'm going to draft the y-axis. And these are all defined, not necessarily arbitrary, but defined. There's the y. And my point, I'll go ahead and make my point in blue again. Um, I don't know why blue. My point is right there. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be rotating about an axis, right, that that's defined as 60 degrees, which is actually pi over 3. So, and we're going to be rotating it also 60 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and do what I'm not supposed to do here too much, which is go ahead and erase this stuff out and put the more formal, important definition here for you. All right, so... As you get into this, you're going to see it's all going to have to be, what we're looking at this here, this assumes a right-hand coordinate system. So you're going to see that becomes important as we start multiplying vectors of two different directions together, the unit, the component vectors in the i, j, or k direction. That said, what is the rotation quaternion defined by? It's actually defined this way, and also go ahead to Q sub R, I guess I'll call it the rotation quaternion, is equal to, and I'll put these in, again, colors, and we'll try to keep the colors one last time going through here. It's equal to the cosine of the rotation angle divided by 2 in the real portion, and then I'll in the unreal portion or the imaginary portion, you also then have the sine of alpha divided by 2 times the vector times the axis vector. So I'll go ahead and put that here times the axis vector. Now the axis vector, of course, has three components, and those components, so I'll rewrite this one more time. It's the cosine of alpha over 2, and then the sine of alpha over 2 and then that vector looks something like this it has a x component a right a 
y component b. Oh, we don't want to call a and b, so I'm going to go ahead and see we're calling that and we get confusing. It's going to have a component um, in the x, y, and z direction. So I'll just, guess, I'll just use x, y, and z, I guess. That shouldn't be too confusing. So this is going to be some value in the x and then some value in the y. and some value in the z. Now, that's going to be the unit vector, if you would, the unit vector, right? This is the axis vector, which is also a unit vector, which means that the magnitude of that vector is going to be 1. And if you want to think about it this way, it's a, the, it's, this defines a point on a 3D globe or a sphere, which is right with which has a radius of one. All right. So for our problem, we're going to do it this way. We're going to do it at 60 degrees, and so our vector, our quaternion rotation, turns out to be this way. Now think about it. So 60 degrees. So we're now we're looking at the cosine of 30, and the cosine of 30 is the square root of three over two. So we're that's a real number. So the cosine of 30 is the square root of 3 over 2. And by now, hopefully, you realize why you push so hard to understand how these things travel together. The sine of 30 is 1 half. And we'll go ahead and fill this in and then fill the numbers back up on top here in a second. So now. This is now the not the angle of rotation, but the angle of the axis vector, which gets us a value of x. And in this case, that value of x of the unit vector that is at 60 degrees is 1 half. All right, the cosine, I don't really want to write the cosine, but it's actually 1 half is this point on the unit circle that defines a 60 degree um, angle in the plane. So because we're going to be rotating about an axis that is in fact in the xy plane, though later you'll see the beauty of this is that you don't have to do that. This is all about being able to do 3D rotations without gimbal lock. And if this is one half, once again you'll remember that the y is the square root of 3 over 2. And depending on who you're teaching this to, you may never mention that these are cosines and sines. You might call them direction cosines. You probably will just call them and point out to where they are on the circle. This is the square root of 3 over 2. And this, of course, I'll put it in the color. It's still going to be 0. First off, I've got that wrong, so I want to make that green. Keep it consistent for now. And so I'm going to go ahead and put that in green. What I'm doing off here on the side, you don't see, is I'm, I'm picking up ink, basically, so I can have the same consistent color. And this, we said, was the square root of 3 over 2. And finally, what we want to do is set this to be 0. And before I break the video, I'll go ahead and stick the quaternion where it needs to be. So in other words, when, by the time we multiply these out, we have these values in our kind of basic template, if you would. So the quaternion of rotation is the square root of 3 over 2. 1 half times 1 half is 1 quarter. Square root of 3 over 2 times 1 half is the square root of 3 over 4. And because we are flat in the plane, x, y plane, this last one becomes 0. And you'll finally see that when we shift this thing, these things over here, if this is the quad, rotation quaternion, it's going to be the same over here, it's going to, except it's going to have negative in the i, j, and k components. So it's going to be the square root of 3 over 2 minus 1 quarter and minus the square root of 3 over 4. That becomes a sandwich product. We'll pick it up in the next video and do the calculations through and show you that it does in fact work.